Greetings, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening from wherever you are around the world. I see many people are connecting now and saying hello in the chat from many different countries. It's a, it's a great pleasure that I have to welcome you uh, to the launch of the PERS 2021 results. Uh, my name, for those of you who don't know me, is Thierry Rocher. I am Director for Evaluation and School Performance at the DEP, which is the statistical department of the Ministry of Education in France. But today, however, I'm here as the elected chair of the IE Association, which is a responsibility that I hold since January 2019. Today, we are very excited to share with you the first major findings from PERS 2021 and how these results can inform policies and practices in education. But before the results are presented to you, I would like to say a few words about IEA, our association. So IEA stands for International Association for the Evaluation of Educational Achievement. It is an international, non-profit and independent association. Our organization is composed of diverse body, national research institutions, government agencies, scholars, analysts, etc. More than 60 countries are actively involved in the IEA network and over 100 education systems participate in our studies. IEA also works closely with partner organizations to implement international comparative studies, such as in this case of PERS today, Boston College, which is the international study center for both teams and PERS. The IEA has a long history since 1958, when the IEA created the first international assessment to compare student achievements. At that time, it was in mathematics. The aim was to find out answers to key research questions through international comparison, with the hope that countries could learn from each other. So during more than 60 years now, IEA has set up comparative studies of education systems across the world to enable a better understanding of the policies and practices that foster educational progress. Today, as you know, international assessments have become an important part of the public debate in education, and they are probably one of the most important tools policymakers and other educational stakeholders have to inform evidence-based decision-making for educational reform. And in this respect, PERS is an extremely rich survey, as it has a 20-year perspective with comparable data which allows us to follow the evolution of the performance of educational systems over a long-term period. Also, PERS holds a unique position in the field of international assessments, as it focuses on early learning skills in young students. Indeed, by targeting fourth grade pupils in reading comprehension, this study puts the spotlight on the key competence during critical formative years. Research has constantly shown that developing strong literacy skills at a young age is vital for future academic achievement. Thus, PERS provide us with essential data to inform policies and strategies that can have an important impact on students' success. Now it's time to introduce our speakers. We are going to present the main results of PERS 2021. Aina Mullis and Matthias von Davie. Dr. Aina Mullis is Executive Director of the Timson Peirce International Study Center and a long standing member of the Technical Expert Group of the IEA. She is a research professor at Boston College in the Lynch School of Education and Human Development's Department of Measurement, Evaluation, Statistics, and Assessment. Over her 20 years with IEA, beginning with TIMS in 1995 and then founding PERS, Dr. Mullis has played a key leadership role in building TIMS and PERS into the global assessment programs they are today. Professor Matthias von Davier is professor in education at the Lynch School of Education and Human Development at Boston College, and he also serves as executive director at the Teams and Pearls International Study Center. Prior to joining the faculty at Boston College, he held the distinguished 
uh, research scientist position at the National Board of Medical Examiners in Philadelphia. And before that, Professor Van Davier was affiliated for 17 years with Educational Testing Service in Princeton, most recently as Senior Research Director and Co-Director of the Center for Global Assessment. So Aina and Matthias will both present you the first major result of the study, and you will see that the results are very informative and are clearly not limited only to rankings. You will be able to choose different perspectives among all these results. And to this regard, uh, Dirk Asted, after Aina and Matthias' presentation, uh, Dirk Asted, the executive director of the IEA, will tell you about the key messages for policy and practice uh, just after this presentation. So please note that you can ask questions in the chat uh, during the presentation. So feel free to do it. We will have uh, a bit of time to, to have a, a, a Q&A session at the end of uh, the presentations. So please, Aina and Matthias, the floor is yours. Thank you, Thierry. Welcome and good day to everyone. I am very happy to be participating in the release of the international results of the PEARLS 2021 Assessment of Reading Achievement. I'm going to begin our presentation by taking a few minutes to describe the unique aspects of this PEARLS 2021 reading assessment. And I'll summarize the achievement results. <clears throat> then Dr. Matthias von Davier will describe key results from the rich array of PEARLS 2021 questionnaire data about the home and school context in which students learn to read. Next. PEARLS is the global standard for monitoring reading achievement at the fourth grade. The fourth grade is an important transition point in student schooling, a time when they should learn, already have learned to read and now be concentrating on reading to learn. Founded by IEA more than 20 years ago in 2001, PEARLS is conducted on a regular five-year cycle, making PEARLS 2021 the fifth PEARLS assessment to date. PEARLS has evolved with each assessment, with PEARLS 2021 particularly noteworthy in the history of PEARLS, because it marks the transition to state-of-the-art digital assessment. About half the nearly 60 countries participating in PEARLS 2021 administered the assessment using the new digital systems. Next. The digital reading assessment included an innovative user interface where students can scroll freely through the longer text using the scroll bar on the right and answer and access the assessment questions from the bottom using the red button to access a question, the black button to hide the questions and the green progress arrows to go from question to question. This enables students to locate and match relevant parts of these longer texts to the question and consider the two together. Next. In addition, to reflect today's information society where reading, often online, requires sorting useful from useless information, as well as comprehension of what's meaningful, the digital assessment capabilities enabled including tasks based on simulated internet websites, originally labeled ePearls. One such task in Pearls 2021 about the importance of the world's oceans included this website about coral reefs, which had an animated map and a video in addition to the text. On the left, 
The teacher avatar guided the students through the websites and asked the questions. Two more of these e girls tests are available on the IEA website, so you can participate in the full girls experience. Next. All in all, PEARLS 2021 was a very ambitious and comprehensive reading assessment based on countries' shared expectations of what types of materials students should be able to read. The PEARLS 2021 reading assessment framework developed together with the participating countries articulates two major purposes for reading often used by young students literary and informational, and a range of reading comprehension skills and strategies. In addition, the PEARLS countries participated fully in recommending and reviewing the materials and questions in the reading assessment itself. PEARLS 2021 consisted of a wide variety of 18 longer literary and informational texts and accompanying sets of questions, as well as five online reading tests about science and history topics. Next. As another noteworthy but completely different aspect of PEARLS 2021, it is the only international assessment that collected data at the fourth grade during the COVID-19 pandemic. In total, almost 400,000 students were assessed in 57 countries and eight benchmarking entities, which were regions of participating countries, such as states or provinces. The pandemic did result in obstacles and challenges during data collection due to school closures. Nearly half the students attended schools where normal school operations were disrupted for two months or more. Still, heroic efforts by the Pearls countries resulted in a successful data collection, even though it took longer than usual, almost two years from November 2020 to June 2022. The extended data collection did result in a lack of strict comparability in achievement results for a small set of countries. Next. Many of the countries, 43 of the 47 countries, were able to assist students at the end of fourth grade, according to the PEARLS guidelines. However, 14 Northern Hemisphere countries delayed assessment over the summer into the fifth grade. For the most part, students were in the same schools that had been selected for assessment at the fourth grade, but at the beginning of the fifth grade, students were six months older on average than their counterparts in the prior 2016 trend assessment as well as six months older on average than the students in the other PEARLS 2021 countries. And a number of the delayed assessment countries appeared to have an achievement advantage. To provide information about the home and school context in which students learn to read, PEARLS 2021 also included a series of background questionnaires. Extensive analyses of background questionnaire results detected no differences in the questionnaire data according to the time of testing. And the questionnaire results, which will be presented in a little bit, are based on all 57 countries. Next. Despite the challenges, PEARLS 2021 data collection was successful in providing high quality data. Multiple adjudications were held to scrutinize and evaluate adherence to the PEARL sampling and data collection standards with high standards met by the PEARL's 2021 participating countries, similar to the high levels in previous PEARL's assessments. Next. 
There is evidence of some negative impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on students' reading achievement. However, the precise degree of the impact in the PEARL's 2021 countries is unknown. According to the students' parents, learning progress was affected somewhat or a lot for two thirds of the students. However, as an enormous complicating factor, according to school principals, there were substantial differences within and across countries in the duration and types of reactions to school closures. IEA will be delving deeper into the question of the impact of the pandemic as the subject of future research, but because of the wide variation from place to place, school to school, often this research needs to be conducted together with or by the countries themselves. Now the summary of reading achievement results. First, the good news. Based on the 43 countries that were able to collect data according to the end of the fourth grade schedule, PEARLS 2021 showed that internationally, there are many good readers at the fourth grade. Despite the COVID pandemic, in a majority of these countries, significant percentages of students reach the PEARL's international benchmarks. As particularly good news, at least 94% in the majority of countries reach the low benchmark, demonstrating that they could read relatively uncomplicated material and indicating nearly universal literacy in these countries. Reforce, 75% of the students reached the intermediate benchmark, demonstrating the ability to interpret, integrate, and evaluate a variety of text and visual elements in relatively difficult materials. The advanced benchmark is a target for expert readers, but still, the majority of countries had some fourth grade students reading at this level. Next, a number of these countries had high achievement on average. Singapore had the highest average reading achievement, well above the high international benchmark. Hong Kong and the Russian Federation also had average achievement above the high international benchmark. In addition, England, Finland, Poland, Chinese Taipei, and Sweden had average achievement close to the high international benchmark. Next, the gender gap favoring girls continued the pattern from previous assessment. Girls had a higher average reading achievement than boys in 51 of the 57 Pearls 2021 20, countries. On average, across countries, the gap was substantial, 19 points. Next. Now, the not so good news. The trend results show evidence of the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic internationally. The upward trends reported in the previous assessment, Pearls 2016, solved in the PEARLS 2021 assessment with the recent trend showing a dip in achievement internationally. Between PEARLS 2016 and 2021, for the 32 countries with comparable data for the two most recent assessments, only three countries showed higher average achievement in 2021. Eight had no change and 21 of the 32 countries had declines. This was a definite reversal in the largely positive trends reported in 2016, shown on the bottom half of this slide. 
where for the 40 countries with comparable data between the two prior assessments, 2011 and 2016, 18 had higher average achievement in 2016. 12 had no change and 10 had declines. This is a difference of about two thirds with declines in pearls 2021 compared to only one fourth with declines in pearls 2016. Now, over to you, Matthias. Next. Okay, yeah, thank you, Aina. And I'm also very happy to be here and be able to uh, talk to you a little bit more about the context data. Um, but first, let me acknowledge really the countries and the tremendous work they went through and uh, also the work at the IEA offices. And last but not least, um, the amazing staff at the Tims and Pearls International Study Center. So um, what we see here today really is the work of hundreds, if not thousands of people. And of course, many, many uh, um, people in the countries uh, uh, who helped collect the data uh, and the students in the end. Um, PEARLS really has, as I know already mentioned, outstanding context data. And I really want to make sure that we don't forget about this and also look at this really, really closely. Um, just because, well, sometimes it gets a little bit not quite forgotten, but uh, takes a second maybe backseat behind the ranking of countries. But a lot of very, very interesting information is in the context data. And I know alluded to that a little bit with the data about uh, the COVID pandemic, for example. Um, context data makes these types of assessments even more interesting and useful for policymakers, for countries, for regions to, to better understand how the different groups in the country vary and, and how their average achievement is. I will take you through a couple of examples of the context data. You will find more in the international report that, of course, will also now be online. Um, I'm going to talk about home background, about school background and students background. There's also teacher data, but that is um, because of the many disruptions and the unknown uh, extent to which school actually was able to uh, pro, um, proceed as business as usual or had interruptions and, and uh, school closings and did some yeah, online education. The teacher data is a little bit more complex. However, everything is in the database. Next slide, please. Um, so first I'll talk about the home support for um, reading achievement. Um, this is essentially what the parents provided, what kind of information they can give us about what happens at home. And it's very important to realize that parents actually matter quite a lot. Next slide. First, I'm going to talk about the home socioeconomic status. That's a new index that we derived based on um, research literature. We had the data already in our context questionnaires. We combined them in a uh, new way according to best practice and research, and essentially provided an index that can be used to better understand how the home background relates to average achievement. And as you see, it's a very strong relationship. So we have three categories here. We distinguish between high, middle, and lower socioeconomic status. We have the percentage of students, and all the slides will have the same structure. And we see the average achievement across countries associated with these three levels. Um, so the lower level has an average achievement of 457 points pretty low. The middle level of socioeconomic status has an average achievement of 501 points on the Pearls 21 scale. Um, and the high socioeconomic status, about 30% of households belong to this group, has an average achievement of 543. If you look at this difference, this is a very large difference. Uh, Aina talked about the benchmarks and how far they are sitting apart. 
this is a very, very strong association between uh, socioeconomic status and uh, average student achievement. Next slide, please. Um, another variable that is also based on parents' uh, reports is the early literacy activities before primary school. So essentially parents tell us what they've done with students and they tell us how often they were reading, uh, singing songs, telling stories. And we distinguish again three different levels. Uh, parents report 42% to do this very often, 55% to do this sometimes. And very few parents actually say they never or almost never do things like reading to their children, telling stories, singing songs. Again, we see quite a bit of a difference, uh, even though the lowest group is quite small, but still the difference is again almost yeah, exactly 100 points here between the group of parents who do these kinds of activities with their children often versus almost, or uh, almost never or never. The sometimes group uh, sits closer fortunately to the often group in terms of average achievement with 495 points and the often group has 518 points whereas the low group with 418 points is really far below that so again it shows that parents matter what they do with students matter an extremely important finding and certainly something that can be replicated over and over again and is valid in all the countries um, next slide. This is a question or a set of questions that talks about what students were able to do when they were joining primary school. This talks about what kind of early literacy tasks they were able to perform. Uh, here we have an almost even distribution across the levels, so not well, moderately well and very well. And uh, we see somewhat smaller differences. So again, this is a report of parents, what their children were able to do when they joined primary school. Um, again, this is quite a predictive scale, um, a variable that actually explains quite a bit. Maybe not quite as strong as the previous ones that I've shown you, but all these variables uh, have a very interesting a substantial association with um, student achievement and can be analyzed in uh, either individually or in combination to test different types of questions you might have about the data to, to explore deeper and, and go into what kind of factors are associated with um, average achievement in, I don't know, combination in um, conjunction with other variables that you might have on the student level, on the school level. Um, so there, it, it's a host of different types of analyses and explorations you can do with this data. Next slide, please. Um, here's parents reporting how much they liked reading. And this is maybe it's surprising to some this is really a personal preference what do you like do you like reading do you like other things and even that maybe for others not so surprising has quite some association so parents model what's what their children are doing if you see your parent reading you see your parent enjoy reading that has an impact um, here we have a pretty big group in the middle that says they somewhat like reading the ones who very much like reading, uh, students uh, who have parents who say they very much like reading, have an average score of 526. Um, students who have somewhat, parents who somewhat like reading have 498. And then the don't like reading group has 479 average achievement. Again, an association that shouldn't be ignored. Next slide, please. So school support and reading achievement. This is about what the principals tell us. Next slide. Um, here we have um, a set of questions about discipline, disorderly behavior, bullying. 
if, uh, if, if uh, school principals report that there's almost any, no problems at all, again, there's highest achievement with 510 points on average. Fortunately, small groups are minor and moderate to severe discipline problems, and they again have lower achievement uh, than students who attend those types of schools with moderate to severe discipline problems have an average expected reading achievement of 465 points. So ones with hardly any problems have an average achievement of 510 points. So again, you see even at the school level, we have quite an association. Next, level, uh, next slide, please. School resource shortages, similar picture here. If you have no resource shortages, the average achievement is 519. This is uh, reported by about 31% of schools. They don't have any shortages. Some shortages um, is associated with an average achievement of students of 498 and then affected a lot. Fortunately, a very small group with 8%, but again, it shows that, yeah, we should support schools and, and give them what they need. Schools who have resource shortages uh, and report those to be severe have an average achievement of 472 um, points on the Pulse Trend Scale. Next slide. The academic success emphasis is another important scale. So for very high emphasis, 10% of schools reporting this, we have an average achievement of 525. Uh, high emphasis, 58%. Medium emphasis, a third of schools say they have a medium emphasis on school academic success. And their students have an expected achievement of four. 86 points on the Pulse Trend Scale. Again, you see the obvious difference that is true in all these different scales. Next slide, please. And then finally, what the students say themselves. Um, let's go to the next slide. We have very strong findings here as well. The first scale is uh, how confident students are in reading. And if you think back to the socioeconomic status and the other early slides that I've shown you, again, this is one slide where you see a very big difference between very confident readers with 541 points. 43% of students fortunately say they are very confident. Somewhat confident is 498 points, 35%, and not confident, 22 points with 449. That doesn't mean that you only have to tell students be more confident. You actually have to do walk the walk and talk the talk, as they say. Um, they have to get experience and, and enjoy reading, find reading useful for them and feel that they actually gain and uh, are being helped and become confident. You, you can't just make snip your fingers and make students confident by telling them to be. So we have to work on that, and that has very good outcomes. Next slide. Students like reading is a somewhat weaker association. So being confident shows a stronger association. If they say they like reading, that also helps. But being confident readers helps more, to say the least. And 18% say they do not like reading, but still are that group, for example, if you would directly compare it to those who are not confident in reading, you would see quite a difference in average achievement. Let me keep it at that because I'm kind of on the slow side here. Next slide, please. Um, yeah, so as I already mentioned, Pearls 21 was really a challenge and countries went through a heroic effort. We really look forward to Pearls 2026, which is the next uh, assessment in the Pearl's trend history, 25 years of trend. And between 2016 and 26, hopefully we have two data points that really allow us to better understand what happened in, during 21 in the times of COVID. Um, we have a lot of context data relevant to that. We also have a lot of specific COVID questions that Ina mentioned, but again, Pearl's 2026 hopefully is free of those impacts. Next slide, please. 
So Perth 26 will complete the transition to a fully digital assessment, will be very uh, much utilizing the capabilities of a digital environment. You will have different types of more interactive response types. You have more automated scoring checks and better quality assurance. Then uh, you can do with paper-based assessments, you can do process data information, you can look at what students are actually doing while they solve problems and while they read. Um, we will have an adaptive design that targets uh, the different distributions in countries better. And we, of course, will also work on evolving these context questionnaires, including things around well-being, etc. Next slide, please. And we're also very excited to announce that there is an option to join a longitudinal study connected to PEARLS 2026, where we would have the same students be assessed a year later. That's not a must, but that's an option for countries and some countries are very interested in that. We already have experience in TIMS uh, around um, the interest in that and how to get this off the ground. Um, this gives you extremely valuable additional data around average growth of students, uh, which groups grow faster and slower in terms of uh, reading achievement over a year of time. And last slide, please. Next. A big thank you to everybody and yeah, we are 501 people, so wonderful turnout and back to, I think, Thierry and Dirk. Thank you very much, Matthias, and thank you very much, Aina and Matthias, both of you for the wonderful presentation. And thank you to have shown the, the richness of the, the results of first 2021, the first results, because there will be of course, many more to come in secondary analysis in, the, in future weeks and months. Thank you again. And indeed, you said it, Matthias, we have many uh, attendees today, so it's, it's really exciting. And we are going to continue with Dirk Astet. So let me introduce uh, our next speaker. And so Dirk will tell you about key messages for policy and practices. Dr. Dirk Asted is the executive director of our association, IEA, leading its high quality comparative research. He oversees operations, studies and services and drives the overall strategic vision. Prior to assuming his current role, he was co-director of the IEA Data Processing and Research Center. Dr. Asted has an in-depth knowledge of large-scale educational assessment built on years of experience. Dr. Asset, Asset is also the acting chair of IES Technical Executive Group and co-editor-in-chief of the IEA ETS Research Institute's journal, Large Scale Assessments in Education. So thank you very much, Dirk. The floor is yours. Thank you, Thierry. Uh, and also a big thanks to Aina and Matthias for sharing this very, very interesting results that we've just seen. I'd like to start saying congratulations and thanks to all of you who are involved in this cycle of PERS. From study centers to school principals, teachers, parents, students, Boston College and IAA colleagues, and all of the partners who work on PERS. A study like PERS is not a small undertaking, and this cycle was especially challenging due to the global disruption of teaching and learning. PERS, as we heard, has a unique position in the field of international assessments as its focus on early learning skills in young students. Mastery of language is a precondition for all future learning. If you cannot read sufficiently at the end of grade four, how can you be successful in learning in all other subjects? It is crucial to have an emphasis on reading skills at this important time in life, not only for learning, but also for active participation in life and society. When it comes to the results, it can be tempting to default on the rankings. But as we've seen today, there's much more in the data. It's much richer. And in my presentation today, I will zoom into four findings from PERTS 2021 
and offer some key takeaways at the international level. From Boston College, we know that the vast majority of students across countries demonstrated basic reading skills, which is excellent. However, we also see trends in the fourth grade reading achievement reveal decreases around the world. In fact, as we saw from Ina, it's the first time in the history of Perth that we see such significant declines across countries. These results unquestionably show a negative impact from the pandemic. But, and that's I think important, perhaps not as prominent as some might have expected. Put the declines into perspective, the average score point difference across countries that experienced a decline in achievement at fourth grade was eight score points. During the pandemic, some people talked about a lost generation or a lost school year. Although we don't have good measurement for the learning gain in one school year, the results from Perth appear to be more moderate and suggest that countries were able to continue teaching and learning, even though maybe not as efficient as in normal times. Daily more research is needed to investigate the so-called learning loss and successful strategies during the learning interruptions. If countries are concerned about the eight score points average uh, difference in achievement trends, the difference in average achievement across the different levels of socioeconomic status is even more striking. Across all participating countries, Students from low socioeconomic backgrounds on average score almost 100 score points below students from more affluent homes. If you compare this with the difference uh, between average achievement of countries, it is clear that there is more difference within than between countries. And the data clearly highlights that a focus must be placed on students from low socioeconomic backgrounds and that more support is needed for the more vulnerable students. To get the score difference some meaning, it may be interesting to know that in Pearls 2016, so our previous Pearls, Denmark administered the assessment at both grade three and grade four, and the score difference was about 46 score points. Similarly, Norway administered the assessment in both grade four and grade five, and the findings show a 42 score point difference between this one year of schooling. Unfortunately, this is not an international valid way of interpreting the score point difference. However, with our next cycle of pearls, as Matthias has shown, we also offer a longitudinal option that aims to assess students one year later, so in both 2026 and 27. And this is one of the benefits that the longitudinal options will offer. A finding that also persists across cycles is a gender gap in reading, favoring girls. In 51 out of 57 countries, girls had higher achievement levels. None of the post 2021 countries had boys scoring higher on average in reading achievement. 20 years of girls reading achievement, and there remains a constant gender gap. And in some countries, this gender gap is even increasing. So, we really need to go deeper into the question, why are boys not doing as well as girls in reading? And what can be done to engage them? My last point is related to the relationship between students' attitudes and higher reading achievement. As we heard also from Matthias, higher average reading achievement and more positive attitudes tend to exist in mutually reinforcing relationships. However, internationally, less than half of the students report feeling very confident or very much liking reading, and fewer boys international compared to girls. Again. Inspiring positive attitudes to reading and developing 
confidence in reading comprehension equitably for both girls and boys is pivotal for education systems to improve reading skills over their students. And connected to reading attitudes, it's not only student attitudes, but also parents' attitudes to reading that is associated to higher levels of achievement, as also Matthias has shown. Yet across all countries, only one third of students had parents reported very much enjoying reading. How can we expect students to like reading if parents don't? I think it's important to look beyond just schools and at and home environment factors to improve students' reading skills and advance students' learning overall. Schools might do a great job, but clearly there's also a role to play in the town. Now, all of these results are becoming available and it's important to make them meaningful and actionable. Reading skills are crucial for all future learning and participation in society, including digital reading skills as being measured by PERS 2021. The release of PERS 21 marks the beginning of much more work and many more publications to come. For many of us, I think it's where the work now starts. And we will be hearing from countries in the panel discussion shortly on what some of their plans are. If I can leave you with two steps for future, it would be I encourage you to dive into the data. The Perth International Database will become available soon and it's an extremely rich and valuable data source for researchers uh, looking into teaching and learning. PERS 2026 is open for enrollment and as presented by Boston College, will bring many new innovations and opportunities for country. So with that, thank you for your attention. I will now pass back to Thierry for the question and answer part of this event. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dirk, for your presentation and uh, for sharing very clearly all these uh, key takeaways for policy and, and practices. So thanks again, three of you, for the richness of your presentations. As I said, it's the first result, so many more to come, but then we still have a few minutes for a Q&A question. There were questions, some questions already in the chat. Do not hesitate to add in the chat if you have any question. In 12 minutes, we will have a, a short break uh, and then afterwards a panel discussion with four panelists uh, from diverse countries. So let me uh, start and I will try to group some questions and not hesitate to add some uh, in the chat again. Um, just maybe it's a, a, a first question by Abdenassa, how to reduce the gap between high performance countries and low performance countries? I guess this is a very tricky question. Uh, we don't have the magic recipe, but maybe it's the, the, the opportunity to, to say a word about an, uh, another program, which is called LANA. It's more targeting for lower performing countries. Maybe Dirk, you can say some words on how IEA uh, try to better measure uh, competencies in lower performing countries. Thank you, Thierry. I think there's two things I'd like to mention. One is we have the initiatives that you just mentioned called LANA, which is the literacy and numeracy assessment, which is targeted to countries where TIMS and PROS is usually um, too difficult to administer. So it's a stepping stone into international assessment. But I think it's also important to see that we have quite a range within the PROS participating countries. And what we can see actually, there's probably not, as you said, a magic wand or a one fits all solution. Um, but what we've seen also in the past is that countries who make use of the PEARLS data, who analyze the PEARLS data, they were able to find um, ways to improve education in their country. And that's true for higher as well as for lower uh, achieving countries. All of them, when diving into the data, will probably find some keys 
where they can initiate changes in the education system. Pearls is about learning from each other, see where are the differences and what's related to achievement. And with that knowledge, policymakers, I'm confident, are able to improve education wherever. There's possibility to, to learn from each other. And I think every country has some strengths and some weaknesses. So we can learn from each other. And I think that's the important thing. Pearls is not a competition. It's not about who is first, who is last. Pearls is about learning from each other. That's the endeavor that we want to take. And with that, I think that's for me the message. Look into the data, look what others are doing. You can't copy policies, but you can learn from each other. That's what we should do. Thanks, dear, to remind this, uh, this important uh, principles. Thank you very much for that. Uh, let's have uh, try to group some questions about some methodological questions uh, uh, regarding the, the, the e assessment. First is about a question from Ladislao, how simulated internet environments were implemented in the paper version, if any, or I know, I guess. And another question is about the mode effect, uh, how they were incorporated in the trends of first. So how um, uh, the mode effect uh, and, uh, are related to the trends. And uh, is it safe to say that for countries with statistically significant mode effects, differences between average scores are partly due to mode effects. So are where this effect corrected for any, every country? So that's more for Matthias, but these two methodological aspects on the e-assessment, maybe Aina mm -hmm. first, Matthias, or Matthias. Okay. Yes, I, I, I will shortly answer that with a short answer, is that the simulated website of five um, simulated website site tasks were only in the digital assessment. The 18 longer um, literary and informational tasks were in both the paper and digital with carefully matched, you know, um, presentations. Okay. Um, yeah, about the mode effect, um, that is a very catchy word. There is never a single mode effect. That is what we learned over the years from many different experiences. Uh, what we've also learned in Pearls again and again is that uh, different questions can become harder or easier and actually different questions became harder or easier also in Pearls 21. So there's not just one number you can subtract or add and then you're done. Um, so what we've done is a statistical adjustment uh, based on best practices um, that is based on a very elaborate design that allowed us to directly compare equivalent samples who took the paper-based assessment and the digital assessment. We looked at the mode effect across countries, and of course there are some differences across countries and all of that, uh, but there's also a very strong indication of an average uh, difference that can be accounted for and that is controlled for. And that way we are able to maintain an international scale that moves forward into the digital future. Because again, the reality changes how students are reading and accessing written information changes over time. Um, as Aina mentioned, some new passages uh, are added only to the digital assessment. These types of interactive passages are only possible in the interactive assessment or in the digital assessment. So every time, and, and you've also seen this in the past, so the past 20 years of PEARLS, every cycle of PEARLS changed the assessment a little bit, actually to some uh, important extent, because it always reflects the current best thinking and practices around uh, reading assessment. Thank you, Matthias, for and Aina for this clarification. Uh, there, are some question about maybe I would get 
groups some question about the different factors, how they are related. For example, the question from Corinna, do you have information on background patterns? We may assume that parents who really enjoy reading may also be more supportive, may also be more resources, etc. Can you see these patterns and how strongly are they? And another, I mean, quite a comparable question from Ian, the children's socioeconomic background seems to correlate with their parents' reading habits. So what do you see where children come from a, a lower, low socioeconomic background, but have parents who read a lot? So it's about, how this factor relates so yeah very good question and also one of the very exciting opportunities to do more research so this data doesn't go away this data is public uh, the first level of reporting tends to work only at the level of looking at overall um, effects of um, the background scales or associations of the background scales with overall reading achievement. Then there's a second line, and I think uh, Dirk alluded to that, Thierry alluded to that a little bit, uh, where we are planning special reports, where we are also talking with different researchers who are interested in the data, where there are training sessions to look deeper into these types of data. And these types of associations are extremely interesting. You can do a lot either in terms of combining multiple background scales with different methods, whether it's factor analytic methods, whether it's latent structure methods, to look deeper into how, how these combinations of factors or how different patterns uh, are associated with reading outcomes, with reading achievement. So there's um, one example we're looking into that, for example, around student well-being right now. Um, so there are many, many opportunities, and I, I could talk for hours about all the different wonderful things you can do in terms of analyses that we we are planning to do and that we are very excited about. But uh, I, I'm happy also to respond by email, so if there are more detailed questions, so I, have, I have a long list of things I want to do. Excellent. Very, yeah, like a teaser for the, for the future studies, etc. It's very, it will be very, very exciting. Thank you very much, Matthias. Maybe there's some questions about enjoying reading. There are, there are a few questions about that. For example, from Ms. Liwe, what was the main reason for students not enjoying reading? Is the reading material boring? Did you perhaps ask what kind of themes would be of their interest? I think it's time we ask children what they want to read. And you also have another question about generally, we don't have enough interesting reading materials for boys. So that's also something about uh, gender differences. So uh, what, 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 is, what are your thoughts about that? I don't know, Aina, Matthias, or Dirk, who wants to jump in on that? The Aina? Well, I, I would say that, of course, there's lots of things. Um, as Matthias pointed out, there's a, mutual um, increase of reading enjoyment with reading achievement. And so being a good reader goes a long way to helping your enjoyment of reading. We, in the, our assessment, um, <laughs> try very hard to have a variety of materials that appeal to um, more girls, I mean, more to both boys and girls to the extent that people have left that, I don't know if uh, you've looked at the migration on the IEA website, but you know, that's a round the, um, African continent, following the grass, following the zebras, following the things that eat <laughs> the zebra. So, I mean, there, there are a lot of very interesting things in the assessment and the students like the materials in the assessment. Um, I know uh, perhaps when we say at the fourth grade, they are supposed to be starting to learn to read to learn so maybe it's not quite as enjoyable as it was when they were learning and had 
interesting stories. Now they're having more science, history, um, maybe not such engaging materials. But I think that the whole um, access to the internet maybe can help students find some more interactive and interesting things to read. Yeah. And if I may chime in just quickly, um, so we have very good information about again the equivalency of the paper based samples and the digital samples before they take the assessment. So in terms of what they do, where they came from, they are very much the same. But if we ask them after the assessment how much they enjoy reading, uh, there's a tiny bit of an advantage for the digital assessment. So the kids actually like it seems like the digital assessment a tiny bit more. So it's an interesting finding. We're still looking into that and digging more into that, but it seems you can make reading more engaging by having different features. And um, yeah, last but not least, we also have an adaptive design. So we try to target the passages to how well students are reading. That also helps with engagement. That's maybe a broader answer but you have to see what students actually can read and then give them texts that are both engaging from the topic, but as well as from the reading level. Thank you, Matthias, for that. So I don't know if Dirk, you have to add on that or it's okay or you can. Well, maybe just, um, I think the, the, these um, responses are, are very uh, covering most of the things. Maybe from a political perspective, what we are seeing is, uh, for example, that in some countries, um, on top of looking at the schools and what's happening there, there are also initiatives uh, for parents that they read more and that they read also to their students to get an early start. Um, so there are some countries also taking measures on um, the, the parental level and not only on schools. So I think there are opportunities um, and I completely agree it, it must be engaging. And maybe we should really reflect on what kind of text we are offering our students. We know from, from science achievement that there was a reflection on if the materials that we provide are interesting for boys as girls as well. Maybe we should consider something like the same and looking at the reading materials that we are providing to the students if they are engaging for boys and girls. Maybe it would be nice to have some materials that are also uh, more engaging for boys. And I think in Pearls, we have a nice coverage of materials that are obviously interesting for boys and girls. Absolutely, thank you, Dirk. Thank you for, for this additional comment and, uh, and clarification. So we are running a bit out of time uh, with the Q&A. So I want to thank again our three presenters. They will, of course, stay with us with uh, the next uh, part of uh, this event. We will have a, we have many more questions, but I guess some of them, and you will see maybe during the panel discussion, we may uh, uh, target some of them and see how our speakers from Denmark uh, United Arab uh, Emirates or New Zealand or Portugal, they could uh, answer to also to give their perspectives on all the kind of questions regarding, for example, I'm taking about, talking about SES. You have a few questions about SES and reading. So that's something we will talk about with our panelists just after a short break, so 10 minute breaks. So stay tuned. You will see a video during the break uh, about uh, um, uh, an example of uh, EPERS task. So stay tuned for 10 minutes. You can have a coffee, of course, and tea or whatever, and come back at 14. So 14 past 11 CT and whatever your time. But in 10 minutes from now, see you very soon. And thank you again to our three presenters. In 2021, IEA's PEARLS, Progress and International Reading Literacy Study, well established as the de facto worldwide standard for monitoring reading comprehension achievement at the primary school level, marked its 20th year. PEARLS 2021 provides data on trends in comparative reading achievement across countries over two decades. PEARLS 2021 offers the PEARLS assessment of literary and informational reading in a digital format 
presenting reading passages and items as an engaging and visually attractive experience that motivates students and increases operational efficiency. With PEARL's all-electronic format, countries can administer the full PEARL's reading assessment, PEARL's literary and informational, as well as the ePEARL's online informational as one seamless, digitally-based endeavor. To assess students' achievement in online reading, IEA's TIMS and PEARL's International Study Center at Boston College created ePEARL's to see how well students can gather information from the internet. In ePEARL's tasks, a teacher avatar guides students through a series of web pages about a social studies or science topic, asking questions that assess their reading comprehension. Similar to printed texts, web pages can present information in various forms, such as photos, illustrations, graphs, charts, tables, maps, and timelines. However, online text presentations typically integrate dynamic elements for visual interest or illustration, videos and audio clips, animated graphics, pop-up windows with information that only appears by clicking, hovering above, or rolling over it, and a variety of code-based features, such as information that appears and disappears, revolves, or changes color. In the Oceans task, students read and answer questions about why oceans are important, ocean life and habitats, and why oceans are threatened. Here, the teacher avatar, Mr. Webster, begins the task by asking students to use Google to search the internet. In question one, Mr. Webster asks students to click on the link that is most likely to explain why oceans are important. The student should click on the fourth link, benefits of the world's oceans. Please note that no matter what link they choose, students are brought to the correct web page. The benefits homepage has two icons for home and interview an advertisement for diving lessons, as well as text and graphics about the major benefits of the oceans, air, water, and food. In question two, students are asked why the plants in the ocean are important for life on Earth. Based on the caption under The Air We Breathe, students should choose the first option, that plants provide oxygen. The text at the bottom of the web page explains that the oceans are connected and provides a link to a map of Earth showing this. To guide the students, Mr. Webster asks them to click on the link to take a closer look. The map shows Earth's continents and how they're surrounded by the five oceans. In question three, Mr. Webster asks, why can what happens in one ocean affect other oceans? Students should select all oceans are connected. Next, to meet an expert about oceans, Mr. Webster asks students to click on the interview icon. The first page of an interview with ocean scientist Sylvia Earle describes her background and asks her how she first became interested in the ocean and what she had to learn to do her job. For assistance with technical terms, students could click on scuba dive. Question 4 asks students why Sylvia Earle was chosen for an interview, with the last option being the correct answer. She has spent her entire life studying oceans. Once students have answered the question, Mr. Webster directs them to click on the red arrow icon to read the rest of the interview. Page two of the interview asks about Sylvia's recent explorations, why she thinks oceans are important, and if she worries about the future of the oceans. There is a link that defines a submersible and a picture of Sylvia in the deep worker submersible. In question five, Mr. Webster asks students why deep worker is useful to underwater explorers. Students are required to type an answer, such as, it can go deeper than a scuba diver. Question six asks students why Sylvia thinks the oceans are important, with the answer being, they provide our drinking water, the first option. Mr. Webster concludes study of the benefits website by introducing the concept of habitats and explaining what they are. Students are shown a list of Google search results, and in question seven, Mr. Webster asks them to click on the link that is most likely to include information about different habitats in the ocean. The student should click on the second link, Ocean Life and Habitats. Again, no matter what link they choose, students are brought to the correct web page. The Ocean Life and Habitats web page has three icons, Home, Coral Reefs, and Mariana Trench. The text describes the three major defining features of ocean habitats, 
showing a graphic representation of ocean life at various depths, and has an advertisement for a travel agency. In question eight, Mr. Webster asks students to use the defining features of ocean habitats to give two ways that ocean habitats can be different. For example, distance from the shore and depth of the ocean. Question nine asks students why plants are found in the top layer of the ocean, and students should explain that this is where there is enough sunlight. Mr. Webster then directs students to click on coral reefs. Mr. Webster tells students to watch the video about life in a coral reef and click close when finished. Question 10 asks students to use all the information on the web page to describe two things about coral reef habitats. For example, they are near shorelines, or coral is an animal and can grow. Question 11 asks students how pollution affects fish that live in coral reefs. Students should observe that the fish will lose their habitat, die, or have no place to live. Mr. Webster then directs students to click on Mariana Trench to study another kind of ocean habitat. Question 12 asks students what the Mount Everest animation shows about the Mariana Trench. Students need to play the video and respond that the trench is deeper than Earth's tallest mountain. Next, Mr. Webster directs students to click on the arrow to learn about weird fish that live in the deepest part of the ocean. In question 13, Mr. Webster asks students to use the text and picture to give two reasons why the deep sea dragonfish is weird. For example, it glows and has big teeth. If students choose to click on deep sea hatchet fish, they can. However, Mr. Webster directs them to move on to the topic of how plastic trash is endangering the oceans. Students are shown a list of Google search results and Mr. Webster asks them to click on the link that is most likely to include information about ocean pollution from plastic. Question 14. The student should click on the third link, plastic in the ocean. Again, no matter what link they choose, students are brought to the correct web page. The plastic in the ocean web page has text describing the huge amount of plastic trash floating in the oceans. The plastic breaks down into tiny poisonous pieces that are eaten by fish, which then are eaten by people. There also is a picture of the trash, an icon entitled, What Can We Do?, and an advertisement for art made of plastic. Question 15 asks students to evaluate how a statement about a plastic bag at the bottom of the Mariana Trench supports the idea of trash everywhere in the ocean. Students should have selected the fourth option, plastic bags have reached such a remote place. Question 16 asks students why the author included the sentence about garbage in the ocean that cannot be seen. The answer is the second option, to emphasize the hidden danger. For the final web page, Mr. Webster directs students to click on What Can We Do? The first paragraph of the What Can We Do? web page describes technical solutions to ocean pollution by recycling or repurposing the plastic in the oceans. The second paragraph gives some ways individuals can reduce the amount of plastic in the oceans by using fewer plastic products, recycling plastic, and picking up trash when they see it. Question 17 asks students one way that technology can reduce the amount of plastic in the ocean, such as machines recycling the plastic. As the final question, question 18, students are asked whether they think one person can make a difference in protecting the oceans and to give two reasons supporting their choice based on what they've read. Students could check yes and give examples from this webpage, or students that checked no could refer to the overwhelming scale of the problem as described on earlier webpages. To conclude, Mr. Webster congratulates students and explains how they can review their work and make changes as necessary, and then log out. So welcome back. I hope you can hear me well. So now it's time for the 
second part of uh, uh, our event, and uh, this is about a, a panel discussion uh, with four colleagues from four different countries, and uh, with the question, what can countries learn from uh, Perth 2021? So uh, I will introduce uh, our four uh, panelists. They will first uh, give a short uh, presentation uh, of their thoughts or findings or situation in their respective countries. And after this uh, uh, three minutes each uh, presentation introduction, we will have, try to have a discussion uh, about different topics on uh, what can we learn from the Perth 2021 the first results. So we have uh, uh, four countries, as I said, uh, from uh, uh, so uh, UAE, Denmark, New Zealand, Portugal. We will start uh, by uh, uh, the Danish colleague. And just before starting uh, to introduce uh, our colleagues, just want to say also uh, our four colleagues come from both I would say ministries of education and also institutes or of research or universities, which reflects really the, the, the variety of, uh, of profiles uh, that we have in our, in our community uh, in IEA. So let me first introduce you uh, uh, Simon Skofouk. Uh, so Dr. Uh, Simon Skofouk uh, is the Danish National Research Coordinator for PERS. He is also associate professor at the Department of Educational Theory and Curriculum Studies at the University of Paris in Denmark. His main research focuses beside student reading achievement with a profound interest in the multimodal aspects of reading and is the bridging of education and the surrounding society through scenario based teaching. So, welcome, Simon, if you can say. Thank you very much. We heard about Denmark and Perth. Thank you. Yeah. Um, our sort of uh, starting point was uh, what sort of uh, focus point do the Perth result uh, gives us? Uh, and seen from my point of view, there are sort of four areas. Uh, what can we learn from Perth? Uh, first of all, I just left the Danish uh, press briefing and uh, I can already see in the Danish media that we have quite an intense debate uh, on the result as the Danish result is the lowest uh, achievement score we've ever had in Pearls. Uh, and um, <clears throat> there are sort of four areas that concerns me or that we will discuss further. And of course, the obvious one is the quality development of reading instruction in Denmark, uh, also including the use of learning to read materials because the learning material market in Denmark is liberate, meaning that teachers are free to choose what materials to use. Uh, we are in Denmark in a situation where we have 19% of our student at the uh, at the lowest competence levels, uh, level one and below, 15% at level one and 4% uh, below, uh, which uh, is, is the worst case that we've ever had. Our best readers read at the same level as they uh, have done always, but our weaker students, uh, the weaker readers have dropped significantly. And uh, <clears throat> one of the main areas that we are focusing, focusing on is the correlation that we see between the student's liking of reading and their achievement score, which uh, correlates. We have a situation where Denmark is the among the countries with the fewest students that actually like reading. That's an, a severe problem that we need to sort of address uh, and deal with. Furthermore, we need to discuss uh, the impact of uh, children's reading and media practices which are developing at the moment with social medias and so on and what are the impacts of the use the wide use as we have in Denmark of social medias uh, towards Danish uh, reading um, achievement scores. Uh, we do see that uh, almost 64% of our students in Denmark has uh, learned to read uh, based on one particular material. 
that dates back to the 90s and maybe we need to sort of discuss if that material uh, should uh, should be changed with something newer and the final uh, point from my side is the exclusion rate in Denmark which is above the 5% that IAA uh, allows and we have worked significant uh, uh, sorry we have worked intense to so, sort of get it down which we also achieved in Pearl 21 but we do we have a situation in Denmark where uh, a large part of our students are not assist as like uh, I think it's 9% uh, now and we need to sort of address that. That's sort of the four areas seen from a Danish perspective. Thank you. Thank you very much, Simon. Thank you very much for this short uh, presentation and uh, to, to give to, uh, us the, the, the picture, uh, global picture in Denmark. I would now in, uh, like to invite uh, Megan from uh, uh, New Zealand. So Megan Chamberlain is a principal analyst in the New Zealand Ministry of Education's Educational Measurement and Assessment Team. Megan's career in education has involved her in both local research as well as international assessments. Her involvement with IA studies go back to the late 80s, working first on the computers in education study, a nice study, and later both sites and teams. Uh, Megan has been the NRC, National Research Coordinator for PERS, since uh, 2006. Uh, and uh, she has also been a member of the PERS Questionnaire Development Group. So please, Megan, the floor is yours. Thank you. Tina uh, Koto Katoa, greetings to you all. And firstly, thank you to the IEA for, for providing me with this opportunity to be part of the panel. Before talking about PEARLS 2021, I'm, I thought I'd reflect on the areas of research that have been undertaken in New Zealand um, using PEARLS data from earlier uh, cycles. New Zealand has taken part in PEARLS since 2001 and it is one of our key studies used for monitoring system performance. It is the only large scale study that assesses students in both uh, of our instructional languages and like other international studies, coverage is inclusive of both state and private education sectors. Much of the analytical work undertaken has been used to provide descriptive statistics for system monitoring purposes, but the data is far richer. For example, the benchmarks and the benchmark descriptors have been invaluable for identifying, identifying areas of comprehension weakness among our students. PEARLS, like our other large scale studies, have highlighted the disparities that exist between our ethnic population groups. Socioeconomic factors go so far in explaining these differences, but there are other factors such as gender and language spoken at home that also impact on these reading outcomes for these students. Some other related research areas have included the importance of participating in early childhood education, particularly children from lower socioeconomic backgrounds. The importance of having access to books at school or at home and fostering reading mileage and students' reading confidence. We've also considered the need for additional data from well, a well-being perspective. Pearls has collected data on whether students are hungry, tired, or have experienced bullying. But in Pearls 2016 and Pearls 2021, New Zealand asked its students how often they actually felt happy when they arrived at school. This information has been important in understanding the role schools play in promoting a positive school environment for developing students' sense of school belonging. We've also used PEARLS 2016 data to look at information provided by teachers and how instruction and development of reading comprehension looks across the Eng English language countries. The data showed that there are more similarities than differences. Um, and the instructional practices, but there were some areas where New, Ze New Zealand stood out, for example, within class grouping by ability, and uh, we we're more likely to do that. Um, and our teachers were also less likely to use longer fiction chapter books as part of their reading instruction. So PEARLS 2021 brings more opportunities, of course. Our first report and overview of findings has just been released. I really hope it has been released. 
Um, we're also working on three other ER reports. Um, one is to look at um, the purposes for and processes of reading comprehension. We have also captured our own um, information on teachers' confidence to teach reading, and this will be the focus of a second report. And thirdly, um, we're also looking at Māori high achievers. This is where we focus on our high achieving Indigenous students learning in English medium settings. It will give us an opportunity to report on this student group with a positive lens rather than coming from a deficit perspective, which sometimes occurs. So these are our research priority areas for the short term, but of course we'll be working with our curriculum and policy colleagues to identify any areas we should be focusing on. Thank you. Thank you very much, Megan, um, for all these points. Very, very interesting, very rich. Uh, now I would like to give the words to uh, our Portuguese colleague, Annabella Serra. So Annabella Serra is a member of the Board of Directors of Educational Assessment Institute in Portugal, which is, name is IAV, at the Ministry of Education. And at IAV, Annabella is responsible for coordinating all international student assessment in which Portugal participates, such as PISA, Teams, ICLS, and PERS. Annabella was the NRC, that means National Research Coordinator of PERS 2021. So please, Annabella, some words on Portugal and PERS 2021. Thierry, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank IA for this opportunity and for having me in this panel with these colleagues of other countries. Um, the first thing I would like to mention is to reinforce the idea of all that are being very important for countries and giving us a very important information about the learning context of students in schools, but also the home context of the children that participate and how is the support given from the parents to the reading learning process of the fourth graders across countries and how this impacts the students' learning. I will start to highlight the positive impact of preschool uh, in students' performance in reading for Portugal. In fact, in Portugal, this positive impact is not only uh, in a very high proportion, as it gets bigger as the students report having attended three or more years of preschools. And we have been investing in preschool since the last 20 years and this investing has putting a, a huge effort on the extension of the school network of preschool but also creating conditions for getting more students enrolled in this level of education and also uh, younger students starting um, preschools. Uh, nowadays we have a policy for um, students with year of four years old getting enrolled and being universal for all students. And that's what's very important to see is this pearls confirms the importance of preschools as the prerequisites for the learning process. In a different level of analysis, I would like to focus um, on the more kind of positive impact, impact that students' perceptions and parents' perceptions about reading, namely the reading confidence of students and the report of, of parents on their reading habits. We can see that from the data that Pearls presents for Portugal, that almost half of the Portuguese students indicated they have feeling very confident in reading, and almost a third of their parents reported how much they like to read. And actually, the Portuguese data show us that as more confident students feel in reading, and more the parents indicate they like to read, the higher is the student's performance in reading. And this is very important for Portugal because um, this reinforces the changes that were introduced in the national plan for reading in order to promote reading literacy and habits, reading habits 
in the family and in the community contests and going behind the school and bringing reading uh, from outside the classrooms. Um, this is the two major ideas I would like to give you note here today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Annabella, for very interesting points, and not only on school, but outside. Maybe we'll come back on that on your plan a bit later on. But then let's move on uh, to our colleagues from uh, United Arab Emirates, uh, namely Sheikha. So Ms. Sheikha Ali Al-Zabi is an Emirati educator. She holds a master in uh, educational leadership and has worked in international assessment for nearly 20 years. Ms. al Zabi has extensive experience as a national research coordinator, leading the United Arab Emirates team in all international assessments, such as Teams, Perth, and Red. She is also the national project manager in PISA, PISA-based taste for school, and TADIS. Ms. al Zabi began her professional career as a science teacher, then specialized in assessment, becoming the international assessment section manager in the National and International Assessment Division at the Ministry of Education in UAE. So, Sheikh, uh, please share your thought with us about first. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Terry, and thanks for the IEA for the IEA for this invitation. Um, I'll start my uh, statement uh, from a vision, uh, a guiding vision here in the United Arab Emirates is to ensure that future generation master the 21st century skill necessary for uh, a rapidly changing world. Authentic reading tasks help to develop knowledge and potential for later years, so students can participate successfully in the society. Reading li literacy is fundamental in enabling students to master skill across the curriculum, targeting inf uh, improvement in, in reading uh, literacy in uh, the early years helps to equip learner with the skills become, uh, to become high achiever and improve learning for all. This belief is among leaders uh, in the United Arab Emirates, not only education. Based on this vision, a lot of uh, high-level plans and strategy were created. We have the UAE National Agenda, we have the Centennial uh, 2071 uh, plan and the National Literacy Strategy. They all emphasize on reading and the importance of reading uh, the country. Based on high-level plan, a lot of uh, effort, program, initiative, targeting the reading in the country. Uh, for example, uh, uh, we have the first ever issued um, a national law of reading that sets legislative uh, framework, executive program, and specific government responsibility to establish the value of reading in the United Arab Emirates. Also, we the uh, year 20 to, uh, 2016 was declared as the year of reading in the in the country. Uh, every uh, month, every year, March is observed as the month of reading in the UAE. In the UAE. Uh, we have also the Arab Reading Challenge. It's uh, the largest ever Arab literacy uh, initiative launched by His Highness Sheikh Hamad Al Rashid, Vice President and Prime Minister of the United Arab Emirates, to encourage students to read. It's it's uh, encourage a student to read as many books as possible in one academic year. We have also the Mohammed Al Rashid Library. It's a huge, huge uh, uh, library that is a. Uh, based on one million square feet uh, uh, space and it is uh, uh, an icon that uh, produce a lot of facility for reading uh, digital and uh, um, and uh, paper reading as well uh, the minister of education have reviewed the uh, the curriculum of reading and creative uh, one uh, and created one uh, curriculum called Salama. It's for the reading, social study, and uh, ethics, and Islamic study uh, as a whole, integrated uh, together. Um, uh, there is also an initiative to add uh, uh, the no novels uh, uh, to the systemic reading in grade 9, 10, 11, and 12. A lot of, of of initiative that is not only from the Ministry of Education, but all other ministry in the country. Uh, and those initiative uh, and program 
were done with a high budget and a lot of effort. Uh, it did help to put the UAE in the top of the region in the reading score, but it's still we are below the international average. Here comes the BEARS rule. The BEARS data allowed, uh, allows Emirates to monitor trend in reading literacy. Interpreting uh, the data together with the questionnaire feedback allows for uh, uh, understanding of large scale assessment and trend analysis provide evidence uh, to uh, ski uh, to stake a, a holder that can use for the level um, uh, for systemic level reform. Pearls helped us to find gaps that need to be filled toward the higher reading achievement in the country. For example, uh, we uh, the the uh, Pearls results showed that English reading score is better than Arabic. Even if the if the uh, uh, student is uh, from an Arabic background or uh, Arabic speaking native speaker, this needs a lot of research, more research. Why this is happening? Is it because of the uh, difficulty or the complexity of the Arabic language uh, uh, in comparison with the English? Or it is because it is highly used in the city? because of the formal al-fusha Arabic that has been used in the curriculum, there's a lot of things need to be uh, 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 research around this specific object. Another thing is like the, the, the PERS data show that UAE students are doing better in digital reading. Uh, which, um, yeah, it says, uh, yeah, yani which support the e-learning method that uh, the United Arab Emirates is taking uh, uh, currently. Uh, another find, finding from Pearl's uh, uh, data is that our high achieving students are doing good in comparison with the with other country, but our low achiever are doing uh, 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 lower are doing bad so we have a very uh, wide gap between the high achiever and the low achiever uh, and, and then uh, so uh, here's a highlight on the low achiever a program that needs to be targeting only uh, low achievers uh, in the country yeah thank you very much thank you very much Eka, for all these insights uh very diverse thank you thank you uh so um there was uh maybe to start with a, a general theme and maybe to target some others uh afterwards but there were several questions also in the chat and it's also something uh, that was uh, uh explained during the presentation and with the new scales especially with uh, regarding the scs the socioeconomic status scale so it's a uh, there's a there's a lot of uh, reaction about uh, the SES and the links with, between uh, uh, the, the reading uh, results in PERS uh, and more and, and more widely, how do we, let's say, uh, address the, 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 the weaknesses of vulnerable students and, uh, and with regards to SES. So are there any insights from your uh, country uh, on, let's say, either from the research orientation that means where are you surprised are your research or would you like to dig in more into this uh, relationship between SES and reading or from a policy perspective in your country what can be done to uh, to, to let's say to to target this issue about uh, the, the, the influence of the social economic status and achievement so that's quite an open question just to start from your country's perspective on this uh, a theme of SES and, uh, and reading and what pearls that have you learned or what can pearls uh, uh, may uh, tell you about this. So we want to start on that. I think Megan, you, you, you addressed a bit this point in your in your presentation. Every one of you, uh, at least Simon as well. Uh, um, well, firstly, um, unfortunately, we probably won't be able to use the Pearls 2021 socioeconomic measure because we had few parents responding to the questionnaire and it rely, it's so reliant. But I, th I think, um, you know, we do know a lot um, already. And, and just from my own perspective of thinking about um, SES, um, in our country, we have the double whammy bammy of um, students being concentrated in schools um, from you know, kids from low SES who are concentrated in schools. And I think those schools have the challenges 
um, more so than where students are attending, you know, from poorer backgrounds who are attending, um, you know, um, schools where there is a more mixed um, school population. And you can see that in the data when we compare ourselves, you know, we've got this very big gap in achievement um, between school types um, according to that student body. Um, you know, from a policy perspective, I think from our and our organisation, we do a we do fund schools um, according to um, the socio-economic um, needs of the student body. And but one of the other things is to look at how schools could actually probably you know have the ex, you know teachers and principals and um, have the expectations that children from low socio-economic backgrounds aren't you know aren't losers. You know they they they. they you know, to have high expectations of those students and to encourage them and um, to be at school and to um, be motivated, um, I think is, is, you know, is just because they're poor, they're not, you know, they're not um, to be forgotten. No, great, great point. And Simon, I saw you reacting. Yeah. As a, first of all, in Denmark, we do have a really high uh, answer rate on the, uh, on the home questionnaire. I think it's 94%. So I can actually say something about the parents here, and and the sort of the sad the sad result is that the SES sort of sort of overrules everything. Uh, we can see uh, correlations between this and that, but every time we see a correlation, it's sort of overruled by the SES, meaning that we do see. Uh, of course, we have to sort of speak relatively here because the. The low-income families in Denmark are not as poor as in other countries, of course, but we do see a significant correlation between SES, of course, and, uh, and achievement score. And um, also with the fact that the SES sort of overrules everything else, uh, goes to this discussion, okay, how do schools sort of lift the uh, low, lower SES students uh, because we cannot count on the parents doing it because if they could, they probably would have because we have been discussing SES for like all the time I re can remember. So maybe we need to start a discussion on how school could sort of assist in, in parents in helping their students there. Maybe society needs to take a, a, a more responsibility here because we do see that uh, SES uh, is a severe problem on the uh, on students' achievement, not only in reading but in math, in science, and so on. So uh, the SS factor is uh, important to address, and I do not think that the parents or the homes sort of can deal with it. So maybe society needs to step in. Thank you. Thank you, Simon. That's uh, very interesting. Of course, schools school cannot do any, everything. So that's uh, your, your point here. And uh, I don't know if from UAE perspective or altogether, if you have some, something to add on what Simon just said. Yes, Sheikha? Yes, uh, actually, um, yeah, the UAE is a relatively um, a rich country and the percentage of uh, 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 student uh, with low uh, social status uh, is is very low, but still we have uh, this um, uh, we have this correlation between the uh, the status or uh, the social status uh, economic status with the um, uh, the score of uh, pearls as well. Uh, the uh, actually the 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 efforts here. Uh, are more uh, uh, goes to uh, helping the, the those uh, uh, families with the uh, with a lot of uh, uh, social. Uh, the, we have uh, there is a social program has been created uh, uh, in the country to 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 support all the the uh, uh, families in need. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Thank you, Sheikha. And, and regarding Portugal, as far as I could, because maybe it's a bit different, because as far as, far as I, I saw in the results, uh, different, I mean, from at least from Simon and Megan, maybe Sheikha a bit different as well, but it's a, because the, the SES gap is quite low in Portugal uh, compared to other countries. Uh, so I was wondering on your side, is this something? 
uh, of importance? What, what does it reflect to your mind? Mm -hmm. yeah, in, in fact, um, we can see that um, the pearls data for Portugal confirms the data we have from other international studies related to the SES. And we also know this on the national level data, but we know that students that coming from higher SES levels have better results, um, but we need to look at this data to understand what the, the part of the reading performance that students get are explained by SES because of what you said. We need to understand better which part belongs to, for instance, school contests and school activities, promoting reading, and also to understand what parts are coming from families, but not directly from the family health. Um, and also to understand which parts coming from uh, the individual level of the students and to understand better this context of being confident, having a certain pattern and certain influence in the results, but liking and enjoying reading has a different um, impact. Uh, so we are very curious about it and actually we will try to understand it well to, to see actually and measure the impact of this new indicator that was introduced in Impulse 2021. Thank you, Annabella. I, I can see many reactions in the chat regarding SCS and I think it's a, it's a hot topic in a way uh, everywhere. Uh, but it makes me think that you 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 uh, mentioned you were mentioning a national plan uh like a societal plan about reading and, and not only in school but also uh, uh, including parents etc in portugal and so i think this is this is also related topic that means how to embark not only school but also the society in uh, in this uh, uh, topic of reading can you tell us a bit more about that and we can see if our colleagues have similar plans in their countries? So the national plan for reading has been um, implemented in Portugal from several years from now. It started as um, a sort of a response to the low levels of reading performance and reading, reading skills of students. And the focus was on uh, classroom work and promoting reading in stu with students and um, having uh, also school libraries involved in this process of getting books to students and make them reading, if I can say it this way. And schools had a lot of activities and they so I mentioned some some of the activities, they implement contests of reading, they uh, challenge students to read out loud in classrooms, they ask all the school to read, for instance, uh, teachers, students, and all, also other staff to read in, in a certain point of a school day. Um, they have these five minutes reading every day. They had a lot of activities to promote reading inside the school. And this new program um, that was launched a um, few years ago, um, the new that comes from 2027, um, the, the idea is to get further this idea of the promotion of reading has to pass the frontiers of the school and the classrooms and go outside. So we are implementing a set of strategies to enroll families in this process, that reading is a process of the families uh, and inside the family contests. And actually, this is a very interesting step on this program, because if we think about this SES that we are talking about, we know that the families with more resources are the families with more books at home and are also the families that read more. So this plan gives us the possibility of 
get into the families with no resources to have books available to read in the family context. And they are also promoting a set of activities that are passing these borders of families and involves all the communities. And some of them are implemented by municipalities, teams, and not only from schools. So um, I'm very excited about this new way of approaching reading in this uh, new uh, national project. Thank you, Annabella. I was, I was thinking of what Simon said before, because it's very interesting, your plan is a more also outside school, but involving parents, etc. But Simon, you said that SES, like overrule and everything, that means once you're taking into account the SES, then it seems that you don't have a lot of factors, but still, is this something uh in your country that uh, that is developed like in i mean to involve parents to involve uh, more widely society about reading simon oh sorry i was I, <laughs> yeah i didn't understand that you were asking me um yeah, but also I'm a bit confused now because I came to think of something uh, different when while Annabella was talking about the reading situation. Uh, so if I, if I can start there, uh, I think one of the things that is also interesting with pearls and the development that we see in pearls that we sort of uh, have seen with the introduction of uh, e-pearls and uh, and the integration of e-pearls in pearls in the digital pearls now is that maybe uh, researchers and, and organizations like EA, EIA also needs to start discussion on the conception of reading because uh, everybody of us agrees that reading of books and text is important and of course it is but maybe we also need to sort of start a discussion on the way students are reading nowadays in a multimodal way uh, and maybe we can learn something from that to sort of keep on improving their reading achievement, not only with letters, but also with pictures uh, as we see in the world today. That was sort of something that came to mind uh, while Annabella was speaking, also because that challenge is even bigger with an SES factor. That's a very good point. I don't know if uh, Megan or Sheikha would react on that. I mean, with PERS giving a paper base, but also transitioning to uh, uh, other kinds of, uh, of reading, in fact, of the way of reading with, with more various uh, uh, kind of text, etc. So is this a challenge for, uh, and especially regarding inequalities? Megan or Sheikha? Um, oh, well, I was just going to pick up on the. Um the digital uh, reading and I think um, um, I, I think New Zealand is very similar to Denmark and how um, both countries um, classrooms are using digital devices for reading quite extensively. Uh, one area we probably need to look is just how what practice is looking like because it seems like there is a, looking up a lot of information but looking up information for what purpose and um, is, to understand it better, I think it's quite crucial and what sort of depth of reading are um, children um, doing. Um, I'm just going to go back to what Annabella was talking about as well. Um, we've had a, a little program called Reading Together, which is a targeted program for children from poorer backgrounds in our schools with um, a higher concentration of um, low socioeconomic students. And that is bringing parents together. They have a, a training program where they um, have um, learn what it's like to work with, be with a child, to read with them, and um, and there was even a little, little, little tiny program, and I'm not sure what exactly what's happened to it, but there was a program that also involved um, working in prisons um, with working with fathers, because um, literacy rates among you know in my population is um, quite low, and so trying to bring those relationships working um, with children and their um, parents, mostly um, fathers that are in um prisons to model that um reading behavior and, and it's been been beneficial to both 
both <laughs> groups, you know, the fathers and the children. So, um, yeah, so I th there's that, that sort of program, I think it's been quite successful, but I think there are certainly more um, ways or areas we need to go into for the digital reading, and I quite like that idea, what is it, read, what are you reading? Uh, certainly in some of our um, paper-based reading, that pictures have always been part of part of the story as as well as the um, the letters. So I'll just leave it at that. Yeah. Thank you, Megan. And and just yeah, that's that connects me with the Sheikha. You were talking about 21st century skills at the beginning. Also, what, what it means a lot of things. But at least as we are talking about digital uh, reading and uh, now new ways of reading. So is it is there something you uh, policy that you are designing to this regard of uh, uh, digital reading in UAE? Yes, um, actually in the UAE, the whole society is going toward digitalization and uh, like from from services to reading to education. And we have um, the saying of uh, His Highness uh, Sheikh Mohammed Bar Rashid. He said that we, we think that uh, uh, e-learning is is uh, uh, is going to 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 close the gap in the, uh, in the learning of reading in, in particular uh, but yani yeah, uh, as we are i think we are still in the uh, first step of e learning and uh, reading through uh, the the uh, um, uh, all different uh, platforms of reading uh, we have uh, uh, like uh, several platforms, like we have uh, 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 one uh, is uh, called Nahla and Nahil. It's an, an illiteracy platform to improve outcome and promote uh, uh, excellence in Arabic learning for K uh, till, uh, till nine students. But uh, still, uh, the the idea of moving to digital is not just. Uh, bringing this uh, uh, text into a, a device, uh, but making it more enjoy enjoyable and more attractive is the most uh, important thing uh, uh, for now. The, 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 the students are very smart. They are creating their own language in, in com communicating with, with, with each other uh, by phone or in, in digital devices. Um, we have something called like uh, Arabic <laughs> language. They do uh, like uh, uh, they use English letter in uh, in uh, reading or writing an Arabic word, and they include like numbers in in where there is uh, the sound of Arabic is not there in English. Uh, those are creative things that children or students are doing, but those are these uh, th methods are dragging them away from the systemic reading, the, the, the actual reading literacy that we are uh, hoping uh, to. Thank you, Sheikha. Uh, so Simon uh, apologized that he has a TV interview. As we, I think today we will all get into uh, some uh, kind of uh, media activities, at least uh, uh, you here in the panel discussion. But maybe a very last question, we have two minutes, but in two words, I think on my personal side, I think first materials, first uh, all the report, but also the, the, the reading materials are very important to communicate with, with teachers uh, about re what is reading comprehension, how they can uh, use that, how can teach that. So, do you agree with that and do you support this idea of uh, even though all the, it's not all the, the students that uh, went through this assessment but still we can use it uh, for teacher purposes and formative uh, aspects so i would just like to argue hear you on uh, three words on that who wants to start maybe megan and so you reacting on that <laughs> oh look i i have to reflect on that because um as many years ago, um, I went out and did some workshops um, with teachers and um, we took some sample texts out and I think a lot of our teachers were quite struck with um, by the by the length of the text that um, our, the um, and the pills assessment and uh, and so and at one stage um, pearls became um, 
um, the assessment of, uh, ex, um, I think it was something like extended reading or something like that. <laughs> and um, But we've changed that thinking now. But um, yes, um, I, 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 mean, I love the snippets. I think the, the IEA has produced um, the teacher snippets um, and how those key areas are for developing comprehension. And I think they're they are great, and I would love for them to be able to be used in New Zealand or, you know, um, adapted or, um, for our context. Um, so, yeah, there's, I think, yeah, teachers are key. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> Same again. Annabella or Sheikha on this? I believe uh, teachers are part of the of parents. Actually, they are parents. And when we uh, uh, when we uh, got the the result in pearls in in the UAE, more than seventy percent of parents does not like reading. Um, this is a very high uh, uh, percentage, and uh, and uh, I believe uh, uh, teachers as well are are away from liking reading uh, to the to the level that we we want them to be a role model to their uh, student and teachers and uh, the length uh, the, of the of the of the passages that megan have mentioned is 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 very accurate in in uh, in this digital world the, the amount of reading is very very uh, uh, little and uh, everyone is only reading uh, like the, the maximum they have they 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 can concentrate on is reading a paragraph but yani i believe that even reading a question is is like a burden for uh, for a lot of students not only uh, teachers so yeah we have an issue here on on, on uh, teachers liking uh, reading as well thank you shaka anabella i guess you have the final word <laughs> so I can share with uh, with everyone who is listening us that we actually produced the national version of the teacher snippet dedicated to pearls, and we promoted a, a meeting with teachers uh, to show them they were available, and the reception of this instrument was very interesting, and teachers actually liked it a lot. It has a lot of strategies and goes behind. The, the passage and the items. Um, of course, they are complete tests with um, a certain length of extension, as Megan said, but with these several numbers of more than, perhaps sometimes more than 10 or 12 items just to assess readings in different ways uh, in the several proposals that Corals has and processes. So for a teacher, these release documents and instruments can be used inside classrooms as a working instrument, uh, deconstructing the, the ideas, deconstructing the, the interpretation of the test with the students, actually not presenting it as a text, as a test, as pearls do it, but um, as a, a real formative instrument for assessment. And I think that's very important that all the, the, national, the international assessments do it, but I think it's very important for PERLs to do it, to make available the instruments, not only to give some examples what a student does when he gets a PERLs test, but to show the teachers what can be done regardless to reading assessments. So I think it's a very huge and very great instrument for teachers. Thank yeah. you. Can I say something here, dear? Yeah, um, uh, um, Annabelle remind me of the uh, an is initiative uh, we have started here in the United Arab Emirates. We've created uh, study guides for the uh, student for the uh, teachers actually uh, we have several study guides uh, they, we have just started the initiative actually and not yet uh, distributed but the all the they are ready to be distributed uh, for the student uh, for the teachers uh, sorry uh, uh, the the idea behind it is making the the international assessment result uh, accessible to all uh, 
uh, teachers and to all students, uh, to all parents, uh, to, to the field in, in general, to the education field. Uh, uh, understanding it or um, making it simple, making it more practical to and it can be used in the in the schools. But we are still in the, as I mentioned, it is being created, but not being distributed yet. OK, thank you, Sheikha, for this uh, national experience and uh, initiative. And just to say on that, that the IEA uh, is making a lot of efforts on, uh, on all this, I mean, to make it accessible or, uh, for teachers. And as uh, Annabella, you said, that can be used in a formative way. And uh, there is a link in the, in the chat that you can see. It was mentioned uh, by you, uh, the IEA teacher snippets, and, uh, which are very useful insight on what can it, a teacher can learn from a, a course on materials and data and, and more generally on IA uh, studies, uh, not a, but for pedagogy. So thank you very much for uh, this very interesting discussion. Uh, we could have spent the whole day, I guess, and, uh, and even more, but uh, we are at the end of uh, our session, uh, five minutes late, uh, which is quite acceptable, I would say. But, uh, so thank you all. I want to thank uh, all of our presenters, uh, Aina, Matthias, Dear, and uh, the four of you, Simon, Sheikha, Megan, Annabella, for your very interesting and rich uh, perspectives. And uh, I want to thank also all of you. I know you are a lot in the, today with us. Uh, we contributed to the study. I want to talk about the all the IEA staff, of course, from Amsterdam and Berg. Uh, I want to talk about the communication staff who made a great job today and, and before also with, with the press and this event today, the Boston College, the study, International Study Center, the, all the NRCs, so the National Research Coordinators from all around uh, the world, and all the countries who participated, the researchers. So I really want to say again, it's. Uh, this study is, is started a long time ago and was a lot of effort. And as it was said, we also experienced as everyone the crisis and so on. And we are very proud today uh, to uh, to release all these results of high quality and with many many things to to say and to come. So that is said to come. Also, you will have in the in the future the, the database because just also to say that all our studies are very transparent. You can have access at the end of the day to with all the data and reports to come and targeted reports, more secondary analysis in the upcoming uh, weeks and months. So thank you very much. Th and uh, thank you to all the attendees. So the next step will be about how to reflect on this result, to share and spread all this result. And uh, not to forget the PERS 2026, which will be in five years from now. In, uh, it will be the next uh, uh, rendezvous with all of you uh, for the next cycle. And just to finish with, don't forget to fill the survey. You have a quick uh, survey through the QR code that you can see here on the screen. So it will help us to, to improve our, such kind of event. So thank you very much again to all of you. you it was very well crowded and, uh, and see you uh, soon in some IE networks maybe uh, in the future. Thank you. Thank you.